you want to learn more about effective management, head over to madsingers.com and sign up for my free management training. Welcome to the Mad Singers Management Podcast from madsingers.com, where entrepreneurs and business managers learn and share. If you like the show, don't forget to leave a review. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Mad Singers Management Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Toma David. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mad Singers Podcast. How are you today? I am very good. Um, and believe it or not, there's people around the world who don't yet know who you are. So before we kick off, would you mind doing a little bit of an introduction so people know how you ended up where you are right now? Yeah, of course. So I'm Tomer. Uh, I have a YouTube channel called Sourcing Monster and two Amazon FBA brands. I also got into the logistics business recently where we offer free services to other people, uh, mainly for Amazon sellers. I started this three, my Amazon journey three years ago, but I'm in the e-commerce space for the last 12 years, 12, 13. I, uh, you know, all my life, I'm really like, like trying to do some online stuff and gigs. And um, yeah, I was tired of being, you know, uh, tied to a brick and mortar business that, where I have to, it was an online business, but the operation was, you know, um, physical. We had to manage employees. It was a jewelry business. And I had to deal with uh, many things that, uh, you know, like, like that people with factories deal with um, a lot of uh, unexpected things and uh, issues and a lot of pressure and stress. Um, so that's why I decided that, uh, you know, it's, it's just not for me. I want something that I can do from anywhere in the world um, at any time. I'm not tied to any time zone or anything like that. If I want to work more or I can delegate to my team, I will do it. But it's not like, uh, like it's, a, it's a must. I can always do it the next day or a different hour of the day. So that's a little background about myself. Perfect. Perfect. And just before we were kicking off, we were talking a little bit about experiment. So I'd love to kick off with that as a topic. I think it's super relevant both in business and in the personal space as well. But um, let me ask from, from your standpoint, like what sort of things have you been experimenting with so far that you have yeah. found value from? Yeah. So, you know, conversion rate optimization, it's a topic that I really, you know, uh, exploring for the last few years. It's uh, I think seven, eight years that I was, uh, since I started my first, um, you know, web conversion optimization test. So basically we would, try to play with elements in the page uh, to increase conversion or increase trust or increase whatever you are, the objective that you're testing. And since then, I really fall in love with that, but I kept it kind of in, in the business space and only limited to, um, to web uh, pages and, and stuff like that. I didn't really expand this, but experiments could really apply to anything that you do in life. And the more that you get the habit of experimenting and measuring the right, it the right way, you can actually like, uh, you know, improve yourself really fast. So, and, and you can explore and find new things that you didn't really know that exist or uh, thought differently. We always have assumptions. We think that, uh, you know, that we are experts sometimes, but we never really know until we actually test. Uh, and see the results because one person from his experience could say that okay on this page if we put this add to cart button in yellow color because amazon is doing it it will convert it 20 percent. and then the other guy said let's do it purple because it matched to our uh, website theme colors and it will convert 30. so you know there is no right and wrong you have to test it for your business because what worked for amazon might not work for you yes Sometimes we have to do like things more in the 360 approach and we have to really see what works uh, for others in general and just kind of take the, the good stuff and implement them if you're limited with time or, or resources and stuff like that. But in general, I started recently in the last few months to test and experiment more stuff like personal stuff, what I eat, what I put in my body and uh, really measure it like, uh, okay, like my energy levels went up, like what are the objectives? It's very important that you really test and measure it correctly because if you can't measure it, you can't really uh, uh, get any, any, anything from the experiment. So that's something that I'm really into uh, last few months and I'm really expanding it to any, anything like uh, even uh, 
outside like uh like more more uh top approach like for example stopping all my advertising for a week see what it's really uh you know how it's affecting the bottom line and i was super surprised i stopped my marketing not for a week but for a few days and i actually got more sales so sometimes things that doesn't make sense or you never uh really believe that happened will happen because you 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 have the habit of experimenting and pushing yourself to try new things love that and i i've actually done like the last year and a half i've done a ton of experimenting myself so i got one of these magical aura rings that are great at measuring like your sleep and your heart rate and all that yes. kind of stuff and there's, there's a lot of tools out there now that can do that sort of stuff but uh, it was super super valuable for the same reason so i basically ended up tracking so particular food so basically anything i eat not necessarily down to the gram, but I just track like what do I eat on a daily basis and when. I tracked um, like the exercise I do. So, you know, on a daily basis again and what specific time. I tracked also like what time I was looking at my phone and my laptop onto because lots of people is like, you know, if you look at your phone like up to two hours before bed, you have a bad sleep and stuff like that. So I was actually doing a lot of testing like that and I have been and I, f- I found some interesting results. So for me personally, uh, like the, the screen light is not an issue. Like I can literally sit up two minutes before I go to bed and stare at a screen and it makes no difference to my sleep quality. Yeah. What I did find out though was that eating, like if I basically eat dinner later than 6.30, that negatively impact my sleep. Um, okay. And that was very interesting because I mean, I'd never thought about that, right? Like I'm used to eating dinner whenever I feel like it. And, you know, sometimes it's six o'clock, sometimes it's seven or eight or whatever. But when you exactly as you say, when you start having data, you can look at things and you can you can actually measure the impact, right? The other thing I did was looking at what I eat. And I realized that um, not carbs per se, but bread specifically makes me sleep worse. Now, also something else very interesting was when I don't eat any carbs at all. So if I have a day with no carbs, basically I sleep less, but I feel more rested when I wake up. So it's like if I don't eat carbs, it feels like my body maybe need less sleep or something. I, I don't know. But that was also really weird. But it's, as you say, when you start measuring things, then you can potentially change them or improve them or anything like that. Um, and, and also like exercise had a, a great impact on my sleep as long as I didn't do it too late. So if I went running at like 10 p.m., that was not good for my sleep. But if I did it, you know, in the morning or at lunch or something, they have a very, very positive impact on my sleep. So yeah. that was a lot, of, a lot of experiments. I think it's very interesting to do and I can definitely recommend people to do them because, again, the results I have is very specific to me and my body. And I know people who have totally different results from doing the exact same tests, right? So try it out, test it, and see what happens. So. And do you know when you actually see the results and data, it gives you confident, confident that maybe before you didn't have and didn't trust the process. So now, because you have the data, you're actually more into the process and you kind of, uh, you know, follow it easier, I think. I was and, and the whole thing is the whole thing is making conscious choices, yeah. right? Because now, like, I still eat dinner at seven or eight sometimes if I want to go out with friends. But the whole thing is I do it as a conscious choice, and it means that when I'm when I'm at home alone or whatever and cooking, then you know I try to cook earlier. So it's it's just about conscious choices to make gradual improvements. Right? 100% I agree with you on that yeah it just gives you also like when I say confidence it gives you like more control and feeling of control perfect perfect right so, so that's so- not you know um, I will, but we'll take it further a little bit but you know and it, it's very important and now how you get the ideas to experiment it's ju- not just uh the experiment itself you constantly I like to really feed myself with new ideas to test and uh, one little trick that helped me with that is, uh, let's say, uh, you know, uh, we talked also about automations. And I really came uh, to hear about this idea and how someone was operating a business that they sold for $30 million with one employee. And I was like, 
how you did it? This is crazy because on the other end, you had this same uh, or not very similar guy, but they have the same kind of numbers, but with 40 or 50 team, mem team members. So I was really, uh, you know, inspired uh, to learn why and how we did it. Um, so, you know, for me to experiment automations, uh, I would really listen uh, when I came back from that mastermind. It was a mastermind that where I met that guy. I really started to listen to podcasts and uh, the talk about automations. And, you know, even if I'm not 100% focused because I work on some other things, I still was able to take some ideas, write them down, and then it will constantly give me ideas to experiment. Um, when you experiment, it's also important to give it enough time. So I'm sure you know that, but uh, you know, sometimes people uh, uh, get uh, data or results that are not accurate or they are not, they are not really know how to uh, give it the, the right explanation and that based on the wrong uh, assumptions, they uh, get wrong results or the results that are not true. So it's important that you give it enough time. You check one thing at a time. If, for example, you want to see if your uh, your uh, slipping is better and you test four things, obviously it's very hard to determine what is the one thing that helped me improve or improve my slip. Um, so, you know, it's, it's also important how to do it. Um, and yeah, this is, uh, this is very fascinating because, you know, I feel now that I'm, you know, I have so many ideas and so many things and I'm kind of unstoppable with this, uh, new way of, uh, experimenting things. Yeah, that makes total sense. And I, I think, I think generally, I mean, in business as well, like in management, I've, I've done the same a lot, right? Like I, I've been passionate about management for many, many years and, and, a lot of the learnings is, I mean, you often don't know what works and what doesn't, right? And the thing is, yeah. if you try and say things to people in a certain way and see how they react and like, I'm, I'm keen on behavior. So I spend a lot of time focusing on not just saying certain things, but saying certain things to certain people, because we're all different. So if you know how to talk to different types of people to get the result or get the outcome you're looking for, I mean, sales is the same, right? Like I've trained a lot of salespeople over the years, particularly in behaviors and, and humans. And it, it's not about if you do this thing, you always get the right result. It's about you need to understand the person who's standing in front of you. And if you're dealing with a certain type of person, talking to them in a certain way or dealing with them in a certain way is more likely to improve the output you get from that conversation. All right. Yes. Yes, and I guess it's a very uh, hard skill to master because it's, you know, uh, for me, I, I, I'm also into really understanding uh, human behaviors, what influence them, what you can do to really touch their uh, emotions. This is a big part of, uh, you know, sales and, uh, you know, copy, uh, copywriting. So that's something that I also love, like, okay, you use one different word or sentence here and you touch... Uh, a uh, much bigger audience of people, for example, or you uh, change this way of uh, showing things instead of really giving them the features, you give them the benefits, what really are going to create emotion within them. Um, so yeah, but for me, like the, the type of, okay, when I talk with this type of person, I have to really be less, let's say, uh, dominant or aggressive because they are like that. Or when you talk with other people, you, you have to change the style of uh, communication. For me, it's very hard to shift between the things. I guess that, you know, with more practice, it will be easier. But uh, yeah, uh, naturally, I'm not great with uh, shifting uh, between uh, styles of communication. So one of the things I go to in my training is a framework called DISC that I was very lucky to learn when I was very early 20s. And that was, for me, absolutely life-changing because that was, I mean, I use that today every single day um what is that again it's a book uh, it, no it's a framework called disc so it's okay. a behavior framework so similar to like myers bricks or uh, some of these behavior frameworks but the, the very very unique thing about disc is that you don't need people to take a test to see who they are you can literally just learn to look at their behavior and uh, from that you can understand who they are and how they need to com be communicated to and all this kind of good stuff right yeah. so so that's uh that that was a framework that helped me so much initially because i was by nature i'm i'm super introvert 
Um, and most people that meet me today don't think I'm an introvert, but I, I 100% am. But I've learned to understand people and I've learned to understand how to communicate with different types of people and how to build connection with different types of people. And when you first learn it, when you first learn to like master and understand different behaviors and so on, it's actually super easy or it's super straightforward. So today I'm in a situation where, you know, if a stranger sits down next to me in an airplane that I've never met before, I, I, I know them well enough. Like that typically gives me enough time to understand who they are as a person, right? So it doesn't, when, when, when you learn this stuff, it doesn't take forever to do it. And particularly in like interview situations or sales situations or something, it's very, very quick to determine how to sell it to that individual. Really, that's that's really exciting, and I definitely I wrote down a note to check it out. This framework, I think I heard about it before, but uh, really didn't uh, pay or invested enough time to really uh, learn this uh, well enough. Um, you you mentioned that you're also about automations uh, before our yeah. uh, recording started. Um, this is something. So when I met that guy that with one uh, you know employee, one uh, VA, I was really amazed how he's doing it because when I was you know, trying to automate a lot of things in my business, it was very not smooth process. Uh, you know, things would constantly break as far as the programming and uh, developers. And, uh, you know, I felt that, you know, because it's not smooth and, uh, you know, uh, flowing, I, you know, I just uh, let it go before, like a few years ago. But now I realize that even if it works 80%, uh, 90% of the times it's still worth it because it's a process that it's automated. You get predictable results, you get predictable uh, numbers. And I basically uh, automated my PPC expenses, uh, my PPC efforts like advertising. So on Amazon, you have, uh, you have listings and uh, the best way to drive sales uh, that convert in uh, you know, very high percentages is through um, the Amazon advertising platform, which is already there. Um, and, uh, I was doing everything manually. I came from a background of marketing, but I realized that the more you grow, uh, it's just hard. It's impossible to really uh, keep track of everything. So using automations, you could, uh, basically have you with the, the exact, uh, rules that you define just, uh, like, like work done for you, but by the bot, by the automation, and you can do it in one day instead of doing it for like in 30 or 40 days. So that was a really game changer. And I did try to test, of course, automations in the PPC area, but the problem with the, the softwares out there that they were deciding for you what are the, 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 like the, the rules. So for example, you would uh, tell this uh, uh, automation tool, I want this product to sell at that ACOS. And ACOS is the percentage of... Uh, uh, spend uh, compared to what you attribute, attributed sales. And then he would do all the changes by himself. He, the algorithm will decide. So these tools usually don't really give you really control. And when things are good, they are good. But when things are wrong or bad performance, then it's very hard to really track record what happened, what they did, how they did. So I really tried those uh, software solutions for a few months, a few of them, and I didn't really like the results because, like I mentioned, you don't really have control. So I found automation to let you decide what rules you want to apply, how you want it to work, and there is always a solution. So sometimes when you feel stuck, remember that probably someone else uh, thought about the solution for that and had this issue before, and if not, maybe it's a good opportunity to create something new, you know? Right. And, and this is the thing with automation, like what, what you're saying, right? A, a lot of people, like I, I know a lot of people in the SaaS tool space and they have actually built tools out of automation. So they've solved the problem they had themselves and they realized, oh, well, you know, if I have this problem, maybe other people have the same problem. And yeah. many, I, I know many people who have ended up building like a SaaS tool from an experience like that because they've ended up solving a problem they had and that was a problem many other people had and therefore um, you know they've, they've come up with something that was unique enough to sell as a product and um, that exactly as you were saying I mean the way the most of those companies have started that you were testing out have probably been the same way so 
the way those automation companies have, have set up PPC have probably been to building something that was somewhat automated and they build it the way that they felt it should work. But that might not be the way you want it to work because that caused certain issues or certain challenges for you. And therefore it's basically an, a new product and a new opportunity, which means, you know, again, potentially it's something that if, if it's, if it doesn't break that frequently, at least, it, it might be something that you can actually uh, build a, an actual product out of, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? When 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 uh, you talked, I remember that uh, maybe a few years ago when, uh, you know, the technology improved and you got a lot of uh, devices and home smart devices to automate things at your home, I was like, oh, another piece of technology. I'm like really against this. I don't want this, like more complications to life. You have this switch of the light switch. You just press it. Why do you need automation? And and when I, I, I will expand the term experiments to trying more things. So not necessarily experiment uh, X against Y, but just to try new things. For example, uh, so, so with the whole, a smart home, I did try it. I did try it recently. And I saw, wow, like you can automate things that usually you forget to doing, you know, it's not just your, you have to replace uh, your manual work. It's also, you're not really doing it. So when you have automation, you kind of set it and forget about it. You don't have to really remind yourself doing it or not. So all the lights outside, they turn on and off on my backyard and the fence and kind of like, I, I really explore the new um, area that really makes my life easier and much more comfortable. So it's not just experiments. It's also, let's say you are not a person that uh, like to go to camping. Try going to camping once in a while. Maybe you will like it now, but before you didn't like it, always try new things. Uh, this will surprise you. The same like the experience uh, thing we talked about. Totally, totally. And I think I think it's, it's I mean, for me, that's also the, the main thing with management, right? Like people people have this idea that, you know, you figure out how to do it and then you just manage people that way. But when I look at it from a management standpoint, like that's exactly the approach I got through. Like I test out so many new things all the time, no matter how long I've been doing it, because you can always find new ways. You can always find better ways. You can always find ways to improve things and get even better, right? And then working with human beings is... Um, that is never boring because everyone is somewhat different. All right. So even though they might have similar behaviors and they might act in similar ways, there people are always people. All right. And and learning how to work with people, learning how to get the most out of people, it it definitely takes time. And yes. particularly like in, in my industry, at least when you're when you're working, I mean, I work with many, many different entrepreneurs. Right, and, and mostly help them get out of their business. So really help them to put the right team in place to take care of the things that you know they normally are. And sometimes it's super easy, and sometimes it's very complex. But it's always a question of finding sort of the right angles and finding the right people, and you know making sure that you you in the end you get the right out uh, result. Right, and and when you get to that point, like so many people think it's impossible like so many people is like working 100 hours a week or 80 hours a week or whatever and they're like oh you know the business can't run without me and it's impossible and all this and uh, it, there's always a possibility there's always a way right yeah that's... if someone else did it like you can do it as well right yeah i think that if we improve that skill of communicating better with others and with ourselves it could really imp like influence everything that we do um uh, whether because you just improve the communication let's say with your team members you will get out of them much b better results and 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 outcome than the return on the investment that you put just improving one area or becoming a better listener is enormous it's amazing yeah yeah i mean so so the thing is most people don't think about this but but communication is always the most frequent behavior we engage in as human beings right there's nothing we spend more time on than actually communicating to people around us like that that is where most human time goes and the investment in communication for me is for most human beings the number one thing that will give you the biggest return 
because you do it so much and it doesn't matter. Like some people are naturally better communicators and some people are of, often by nature less good communicators, right? And the, the challenge is often that the, the people who have the most to communicate or let, let's say differently, the smartest people on the planet is by nature the ones that communicate least good. And the difficulty really? with that is that, I mean, you, you'll see it with a lot of sort of these famous like scientists and, and so on. Um, that the challenge is that when you have a very, very high IQ, you often have a lower EQ, right? Or emotional intelligence or, or general emotions in, in itself, right? So um, what, what happens fundamentally is that, I mean, I, I guess it's just the brain, right? So the, yeah. the, more, the more left brain you are, the more intelligent you generally are right from a from an iq perspective right yes. i don't necessarily consider that as being the success the most important it, it's not about success right like reality is the smartest people are not the most successful people by yeah. by most human sort of measurements right the, the smartest uh, the the most successful people is typically people who take action and the smartest yeah. people often spend way too much time in their head and they know everything or they know a lot of things but they don't actually take enough action with the knowledge they have to be as successful as they can be, right? So that's typically, but, but the whole thing is they often don't communicate well. Now, if people who are very smart learn to communicate more, they often get significantly better output of their time because fundamentally when they can actually effectively communicate their ideas to people around them and people actually understand why it's the right thing to do, then the results of their life and their career become significantly better, right? So I've, I've worked with many, many people in these situations where uh, helping them uh, helping them be able to communicate more effectively um, just to, to help them get their ideas across to other human beings, right? And yeah. that makes, makes a huge difference for them, so. Yeah, you really opened, I mean, those are things that we knew and uh but it was good to hear them and uh get reminders of how important communication is and i know that you're uh, uh hosting me but i have a question for you do you have any recommended books or anything that uh could help us be better communicators um g- generally i have a couple of recommendations normally but uh the, the first one for me is is learn public speaking so i've spent a lot of my time i spent years uh, doing something called toastmasters and the beautiful thing about Toastmasters is that it's it's basically it's run by people for people. But the whole thing is that most people is like, oh, you know, public speaking, that's scary and all that kind of stuff. But it's not in principle about public speaking, but it's about the principle of what you get from public speaking. And what you get from public speaking is, first and foremost, you learn to stand in front of an audience and communicate. So most people often don't communicate very effectively, which means they often talk too much for the output they're giving, or they, they are not comfortable putting their ideas out to the world or things like that, right? So by learning public speaking, you'll learn a few things. One is to be more concise. Because reality is that if you communicate to other people, the, the, the more concise you can make your message, the more likely it is to get across to more people, right? True, true. I Second have a problem thing, with that. I have a YouTube channel and, uh, you know, I, I, I definitely need to improve on that for sure. So, so that's the first value, right? Now, the second thing is that you also learn to utilize your body language more because when you're standing on a stage in front of other people, they look at more things than just what you say. They look a lot more at how you say it, how you're using your body language to say it and, and all this stuff. So, so there's other aspects of communication that is much more important when you're standing on the stage. And again, some people naturally use pretty good body language, but many people don't. And, and learning to do public speaking act, actually help you significantly improve your body language on a, on a, on a good level as well, right? Um, and, and lastly, it just helps you communicate more, right? It helps you, uh, both if you're an introvert, but also just in general, if you're um, like communicating to more people on a regular basis is better because my experience is at least success in life comes from 
not you, but it comes from people around you and it comes from learning ideas, learning things from other people, right? And obviously the more people you surround yourself with, the, the more great people there is to get ideas from, so. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, 100% true. This is like, a, I think that's the easiest tech that is really like, uh, you know, people underestimate the power, just to, to, very quick way to get to where you want, just be around people that had this result already, that will take you like in a very speedy way to your goal. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Right, Toma. Very good to have you on today. Any any resource suggestions you have from people around you, like any books or any resources that have helped you so far that you would recommend for other people? Yeah, um, my memory is not that great. So I could read the book now and forget that I read it uh, after like a week. Uh, but I guess it's all stored in our unconscious mind. That's what I care about. Because sometimes you would, uh, you know, especially in the last three years, I would do some things that I didn't do before and they came naturally to me. And I think or attribute this to books and stuff that I was listening to for years. So, you know, maybe 12, 13 years, I'm listening to audiobooks and reading books, but you don't really see the results of it. But at one point in life, I'm, I, I promise you that it will, uh, you, you will use what you read somewhere or, or, or it will uh, affect your, uh, you know, the way of thinking. So I have a couple of favorite books that are 100% like must read, The Alchemist, uh, Think and Grow Rich. Um, I like The Secret. Uh, it's a little like a funny book, but it's, uh, it's really like I really believe in the fundamentals there and what they uh, explain. And uh, the power of the subconscious mind. I have a lot of books that I read and really always uh, like to explore them and uh, be better. That was a great list of books. So thank you very much. If people are eager to get hold of you, what's the best way to do so? Uh, they can uh, uh, look at my uh, uh, YouTube channel. It's called Sourcing Monster or email me tomer at sourcing-monster.com. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate that. I learned uh, quite a few things here in this uh, recording and uh, uh, it's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Likewise. Thank you very much, Toma. And to the audience, we'll be back again next week. Thank you for hanging out all the way to the end. Thank you for listening to the Mad Singers Management Podcast. Please leave a review. It means the world to us. You can also learn more about management at madsingers.com. 